What is up, you guys? Welcome to another edition of Controversial Thoughts. I just got done recording a podcast with my friend after this past month, George St. Pierre, who is currently looking pretty damn ripped on an animal-based diet. So I thought that this was a good time to do a Controversial Thoughts episode about how to use an animal-based diet for performance. I get a lot of questions. How do I gain weight on a carnivore or animal-based diet? How do I gain muscle? How do I use this if I am a performance athlete? I guess all athletes are performance, but if I'm a CrossFit athlete, if I am a competitive jujitsu athlete, I'm sure I have a lot of uh, MMA athletes and aspiring MMA athletes and martial artists finding interest in this way of eating after George's experiences. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that in this week's episode of Controversial Thoughts. I will start out with a picture of George. He's looking pretty freaking shredded uh, after a month on an animal-based diet. In the podcast that we just did, he said that he lost about four to five pounds of probably water weight related to inflammation and overall um, just swelling and water retention that happens when you are eating foods that are causing inflammation, foods that are probably causing some degree of leaky gut, foods that are causing some degree of immunologic activation. So look for the podcast with George St. Pierre coming out on Tuesday of next week. Interestingly, he also talked about the fact in the podcast that he has a big toe injury that has kind of nagged him for a while. And he was training throughout his month on an animal-based diet. And he eventually after a week or two noticed that the big toe wasn't bothering him anymore, especially when he was sleeping. And you guys have had this experience yourselves. How many times have I heard this from people? My elbow got better or my joint pain got better. It's so cool. And remember, George is eating an animal-based diet. He's not eating carnivore, though it's a close cousin of carnivore. It's an animal-based diet. So what is an animal-based diet? Well, most of you are probably familiar with this. You can email us at heartandsoil.co if you want to get this infographic, which will also be in my cookbook, which will be out in December, but you can pre-order it everywhere now. It's called the Carnivore Code Cookbook. It's on Amazon and everything. And an animal-based diet is a diet that focuses on these foods in the what to eat column. Raw organic honey, A2 dairy if you tolerate it, fruit, both sweet and non-sweet, and uses good fats like tallow and suet ghee if you tolerate dairy rather than seed oils. And as I say here, organ meat, one to two ounces of liver per day, as well as a few ounces of spleen, kidney, heart, thymus, and other organs per week, or the equivalent in desiccated organ supplements like we make from hardened soil. So what is the magic of an animal-based diet? I believe it's the fact that it's a lot of protein, right? It's one gram of protein per pound of body weight. It's organs, either fresh or desiccated, like we make it hardened soil. And we freeze dry the organs, which means that we put them in a freeze dryer, which is a low temperature way to dehydrate them. We're not dehydrating them at 140 degrees, we're dehydrating them at 39 degrees. So it's a very low temperature dehydration. It preserves, pre preserves as many of the nutrients as possible. So you're focusing on meat and organs and you're cutting out a lot of these foods that I would consider to be more toxic plant foods because they're the parts of the plants that are more defended, especially things like seeds, anti-nutrients, oxalates, lectins, digestive enzyme inhibitors, and leaves with things like isothiocyanates, clearly a thyroid toxin as I've talked about many, many times. So you think about the leaves, stems, seeds, and roots of plants being highly defended, whereas most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, plants want animals to consume their fruit. And so it's less Toxic. You can see there's also a medium toxic part to this equation where some roots and tubers are found, some fermented vegetables like sauerkraut or pickles, some herbs, coconut oil, olive oil, avocado oil. Um, although I would say tallow animal fat is going to be much better. So this is the concept of an animal-based diet. You can see here on the right side, the macros. And the first section here is carnivore. If you're eating no plant foods, 30% of your calories from protein, 70% of your calories from fat, which is about one to one fat to protein in grams. But if you're doing an animal-based diet, which I think is much more flexible for most people, you want to include some carbohydrates. And really the carbohydrates, in my opinion, are the magical piece. And I will say, 
humbly, that this is something that I have shifted my opinion or evolved my opinion on over time. I certainly did a carnivore diet with no plants, no carbohydrates for a year and a half. It worked great for me, except that I got electrolyte issues and heart palpitations. And I eventually just felt kind of cold all the time in San Diego. Ketogenesis, I think, is a normal state for humans to move in and out of, but long-term ketosis is not good for humans, in my opinion, and I believe there's a lot of evidence to suggest that that's the case. Now, I actually just read a study today looking at calorie-restricted diets in people with diabetes, and they compared low-carb to high-carb versions, and even a higher carbohydrate version, 53% of carbohydrates, if it was calorie-restricted, improved the diabetes. Ketogenic diets can be great for diabetes. Low-carbohydrate diets can be great for diabetes. But long term, I think that these type of diets, especially for those of us that are looking for performance, are not ideal, which is why when George St. Pierre came to me and said, hey, I want to do a carnivore diet. Um, and I said, man, I would love to help you. And you should do an animal based diet. You should include carbohydrates. These are the least toxic sources of carbohydrates. So if you are a performance athlete, meaning you are MMA, you are running, you are sprinting, you are doing uh, non endurance type exercise, things that require speed or explosiveness, I do think including carbohydrates is gonna be a good choice for you in general. And I would recommend including fruit and honey as the main sources, and then moving to things like sweet potatoes or white rice if you don't tolerate the fruit well. Marlon Chito Vera is a 135 pounder in the UFC. He's eating this way before his upcoming fight, so that's exciting as well. But how do you optimize this way of eating for performance? Well, if you guys follow uh, Hard and Soil on Instagram, at heart and soil supplements, you'll see that we're making a lot of these kind of simple graphics, how to gain muscle on an animal-based diet. Definitely the nutrients and organs will help, well-raised meat, seasonal fruit, eggs, quote, bulking carbohydrates like we wrote here, uh, rice or sweet potato and dairy. Now, I will add here that if you are someone who tolerates dairy, check out colostrum. We make an amazing colostrum, a grass-fed, grass-finished colostrum at heart and soil, it's called Immunimilk. And interestingly, colostrum is actually on the banned substances list for NCAA athletics a lot of times because it contains IGF-1. So if you tolerate dairy, I would see this as a positive thing. I don't see IGF-1 as a bad thing. I see it as a hormone, uh, a growth factor that is going to be very pro-anabolic in humans. And if you tolerate dairy, check out our colostrum. I really believe it will improve your recovery and help you gain muscle and strength. Now, I say that with the asterisk because I don't tolerate dairy, so I don't take colostrum. Um, but many of you who do, I believe, will benefit. So colostrum and dairy are something to think about if you want to bulk or gain muscle on an animal-based diet. Getting enough carbohydrates from the least toxic sources is a good thing. And maybe even including a little bit of white rice or sweet potato if you tolerate it. Now, this is for performance. This is not necessarily for somebody with diabetes. Somebody with diabetes, I would recommend going lower carb and potentially even restricting 500 or 1,000 calories a day like they did in this study I saw while you are fixing the diabetes. Once you get the diabetes under control, you eliminate the seed oils as well, and you get down to a healthy weight, you can probably incorporate carbohydrates back, even fruit. I've done lots of podcasts on fructose and why I don't think it's a problem. I'll do more of those in the future, but just think about this from an evolutionary perspective. Humans have always eaten fruit, I don't think fructose makes any sense to be bad for humans in the context of a food matrix rather than a processed thing like sucrose and table sugar. Totally different story. Reductionist nutritional science doesn't work. So how do you optimize your animal-based diet for performance? Let's go back to the infographic. I would say that you can play around with this macro of carbohydrates. I would keep protein at about one gram a pound per body weight, no matter what you do, I would always include organs in your diet, uh, either fresh or desiccated, like we make it hard in soil. And my recommendations for those looking for performance would be Heart of the Warrior and Lifeblood. We get a lot of great reviews from people who are super stoked about the blood and lifeblood and our upcoming supplement whole package for men has blood in it as well, because you know, male things get full of blood. You guys will figure out what I'm talking, you get it anyway. You can sign up to be the first to be notified when whole package, whole package is released. That was kind of a Freudian slip, whole package. Uh, it'll be in June. It's coming soon, guys. It has blood. But lifeblood, whole heart of the warrior would be my recommendations for performance on an animal-based diet in terms of our supplements. You can play around with this carbohydrate-based piece, increasing that a little bit if you want. Think about it from the perspective of your calories. I think let's just say the average male 
is going to need 2,500 calories a day, maybe even 3,000 if you listen to the podcast with Herman Ponser earlier this week. 20% of your calories is 600 calories as a, an individual eating 3,000 calories a day. That's 150 grams of carbohydrates a day. That's a pretty good amount. So see where you fall on that scale. And if you need more carbohydrates, increase the fruit, increase the honey, but play around with that. And you can kind of scale the fat to see what you think. But I, I like that 20% rule as a general baseline, as a general guidepost for the macros on an animal-based diet. But I do think if you're getting 20, 25% of your calories from carbohydrates, you're going to be fine. Um, get 100 grams, excuse me, one gram of protein per pound of body weight, get organs. And if you tolerate dairy, include colostrum, like we make it hard in soil, include immunomilk or other sources of dairy. Those will all help your performance as an athlete. You can absolutely optimize your animal-based diet to be very high performance. Chito Vera texts me a lot and says he feels great in the gym eating this way. He's definitely getting enough carbs. And George said he felt great during training. Again, you can hear that podcast coming out on Tuesday. Uh, all throughout the last month on this diet. Now, I will add one last thing, which is that every once in a while, somebody transitions to an animal-based diet and they say, I feel low energy. And I, I kind of scratch my head a little bit with that and think you're getting 100, 150, sometimes even 200 grams of carbohydrates a day. Is it possible that you're withdrawing from gluten? Gluten contains gluteomorphins or wheat contains gluteomorphins. Certain things can happen when you stop processed sugar. Certain things can happen when you stop coffee, <laughs> caffeine. Certain things can happen when you pull away from wheat and gluten that can make you feel a little funky, but you're getting enough calories, presumably, and you're getting enough carbohydrates. So you don't need grains to be an athlete. Although I did talk about white rice potentially for athletes, I would use fruit and honey first and see how you do, and then maybe incorporate white rice if the fruit and honey doesn't work for you. But you don't need wheat, you don't need pasta, you don't need oats to be an athlete. You don't need any of that stuff. You don't need pancakes. You don't need bread to be an athlete. So what you do need is micronutrients in organs, things like choline, carnitine, creatine, carnosine, taurine, anserine, so many valuable nutrients, K2, folate, riboflavin. Those are in the organs, either fresh or desiccated. You need protein with collagen. So eat the collagenous parts of your steak, eat the chewy bits or take collagen supplement or take bone broth. We make skin, hair, and nails at Hardened Soil, which has trachea and scapula cartilage in it. Those will all help you massively. And then get your fat from presumably or preferentially animal sources. I really love tallow. I just can't give enough praise. I can't sing the praises of animal fat enough, guys. I get asked all the time, coconut oil, avocado oil, olive oil. And I always say they're much better than seed oils, but none is going to stand up to tallow. We make a tallow supplement, a high stearic acid suet in a capsule called Fire Starter at Hardened Soil, or you can just get it in the food you eat if you get a fatty steak or you get tallow at the store. So all of that, I think combined, as I've laid out with the graphic, again, if you need the graphic, email us radicalhealth at hardensoil.co, will help you optimize your diet for performance. And it's so cool to see athletes like George St. Pierre and Chito Vera using this for performance and doing explosive movements and sports with this type of diet is totally possible. And like George said, I think that when you cut out these more toxic plant foods, a lot of these kind of nagging injuries or nagging pains may just go away for people. You might sleep better, more mental clarity, perform better in general, which is the power of this way of eating and why I do what I do. Because ultimately I'm very interested in autoimmune illness. And I think so many of these nagging injuries that happen with humans are autoimmune, inflammatory, immunologic in nature. And so much of the resilience issues that athletes have is inadequate amounts of protein and collagen and the nutrients found in organs. So hopefully that helps you guys get a sense of how to optimize an animal-based diet for athletic performance. You can always email us radicalhealth at heartandsoil.co if you have questions. In this video, I gave props, I gave shout outs to our colostrum supplement, which is Immunomilk. I gave shout outs to Heart of the Warrior and Lifeblood which will be great for athletes. And I gave a shout out to Skin, Hair, and Nails at Hard and Soil, as well as Firestarter. All kinds of good stuff at Hard and Soil. Check us out. We've got a new website. Let me know what you think. You've got free shipping on orders over 120 bucks. And we are now serving the awesome folks in Canada. We can get you stuff there just in time. George St. Pierre. All right, guys, stay radical. Love you all.